Hey, good morning, guys, gals, aliens, and degen freaks. Welcome to Dano Crypto. On this channel, I give you guys the most recent news. I give you guys simple, effective, and easy moves in the cryptocurrency ecosystems. So we are going to get into the recent Bitcoin pump news. We are going to be seeing some ETF approvals this year year we are going to actually probably see them this month so i want you guys to hit the like button hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when i make new cryptocurrency videos you will be updated immediately onto your phone and you will not miss a beat so we are going to get into some news here right now that has just broke just an hour ago we had just in bitstamp is set to suspend trading for several tokens including solana Matic, Polygon, and Sand impacting US users. So there's actually seven cryptos that they're going to be uh, stopping suspending. Now su suspension not doesn't mean they're completely taking it off. You know, they're just gonna be suspending them. But why, why these specific tokens? We got uh, Axie Infinity, we got Chili's, Mana, Matic, Near Protocol, and Sand and Solana. So let's get into this really quick. At Bitstamp, we have a comprehensive framework in place to continuously evaluate the cryptocurrencies we provide, taking into account the dynamic regulatory environment. Considering recent developments, we are making some changes to our crypto offerings, specifically for our customers residing in the United States. Now, what the heck? Why are they why are they suspending these? It doesn't make any sense. To ensure a smooth transition during the trade hall, we kindly request our users to promptly execute any desired buy or sell orders involving these tokens. That's Axie Infinity, Axie Infinity, Chili's, Mana, Matic, Near, Sand, and Soul. What's the difference between Sand and uh, what's the difference between Sand, Mana, and uh, uh, some other uh, other tokens that are basically going to do the same thing. It doesn't make any sense. So uh, they're not giving any clarity. They're not giving any clarity. Um, uh, we continue to offer up to 30 available cryptocurrencies. Cool. That's great. So what's the difference between those 30 and these right here? See, that's the thing. They probably can't even give you a correct answer. The SEC probably can't even give you a correct answer. And that's the whole point of what we're trying to fight for here in crypto and in the United States is that, look, the entire world is trading these cryptocurrencies and they're not being regulated like they are in the United States. So what is the problem? What's the deal? I want to know what you guys think is preventing the United States from being fully crypto friendly. I think we're being gaslighted. I think our our politicians, at least the ones that are going against crypto, they know that it is the new paradigm that we are getting out of TradFi, the traditional finance system, and we're going to be merging into a new digital world. But with that comes a caveat. We come into a digital world and we're going to be uh, asked to put a chip in our wrist or some kind of thing to where we're going to have to, you know, have our our currency linked with with some kind of social credit score. That's what we don't want. We still want competition and freedom of transaction in this country. So that is what we are working towards. And sorry, guys, I keep itching my nose. I got an itchy nose, but uh, we're going to get back into the news here and we can see that uh, as of late right now, we got Kraken has listed, uh, Kraken's listing sparks explosive growth in Reddit community's tokens. So Kraken has been really friendly with the Reddit community, listing their tokens like Moon and Brick. And then uh, we have um, Kentucky regulators actually approving a discounted power for a crypto mining facility in Kentucky. So that's pretty cool. Go Kentucky. And then we have uh, Binance Secure's historic status as a first fully licensed crypto exchange in El Salvador. So we know El Salvador was... Um, put Bitcoin on their balance sheets. And that was uh, some big bullish news uh, back in uh, 2020, uh, 2022. I believe that was when early 2022, they, they announced that. And we have, you know, PayPal launching the US back stable coin, USD back stable coin. So with that, you know, I did release a video um, yesterday on that news. And then literally shortly after, hours later, after finding out about the stable coin, we had some people digging in and saying that actually the PayPal stable coin is able to be frozen and has some mechanisms in the programming that can uh basically stop someone from using it or they can they can do something to where they can basically 
It's not uh, it's not decentralized. It's pretty de uh, pretty centralized. And if you think about it, you know, Tom Crown made a good point. You know, there's a lot of things in crypto that are centralized. And we I mean, you got to think about it. Tether. Tether is probably one of the most centralized stable coins that we have because it's so connected with Bit, with Bitfinex and and the and Bitcoin and the whole uh, ecosystem of how how our cryptocurrency market uh, and ecosystem even works. So in terms of that, you know, I, I my personal opinion with the PayPal stablecoin is that we have uh, competition. You know, it's just competition. It's just going to get the regular person in crypto and using a stable coin as if they weren't going to do it at all before. So if they weren't going to do it at all before, now they will. It'll just bring people in the market. And it's overall, I think, a good thing. And it's just going to uh, uh, have a bigger uh, eye on Bitcoin as a decentralized option and as well as Ethereum, Cardano, all those things like that. So I think it's, it's good news. So, you know, there's always kind of a double, you know, two sides of the coin. So, uh, pun intended, and we have to watch out for that. So, guys, we are going to get into now the Bitcoin price. So, we're sitting, uh, I just wanted to tell you guys, I'm going to show you my little trades that I'm in right now. So, this uh, uh, Bitcoin trade, I actually got in right at 29400 I was I, I did, had no cash on the side. And um, so it's always it's always depressing when you see these pumps and you you know you could see the levels where you could get in a good trade and just no dry powder on the side. So um, so I, I managed to amass some dry powder and uh, got into this Bitcoin trade, uh, cashed out at 175 percent profit, took half of that uh, profit out and then put it into XRP and ETH. So. Uh, that was at almost the top. I took the profit at almost at the top. We can see here. I'll check my, uh, let's see, order status. And you can see here. Uh, oh, this is on ETH. Let's go on BTC. And, and you can see here on BTC, on the four hour, I have drawn a bull flag. So you can see here. That's just one of the things I wanted to mention as well is we got a clear bull flag here and we saw a nice pump out of that descending wedge. And you can see here that's a cl clear pump out of the descending wedge and we went as high as, uh, let's see, on this candle right here. We went as high as 30,200, almost th uh, 30,300. And then we got rejected off of that. And you can see why we got rejected off of that is because this was the last uh, point where in the wedge that we did see some resistance we saw that we so we're pulling on that resistance again we got this level right here another resistance we're trying to turn that and flip that into support again so i think that's what's going to happen right here we can see how today and the rest of the week goes but we are going to uh, see some movements to the upside. Our target here is around 31,500. That's what I'm looking at as a potential uh, as, as a potential level because you can see here at the top of the at the top of the wedge 31,800. So we're looking at around 31,500. That is what I'm looking for. And so uh, with you know doing kind of the you know scalp trading like this, it's it you know you can see that when you pull your profits up at the top here we saw a retracement all the way back down to here so i pulled profits and instead of putting it back into bitcoin i decided to put it into xrp and ethereum because i think with the with the pump of bitcoin we're going to see these pump on the side as well so um, that's just my personal opinion that is kind of what my trade setups are right now but just showing you that you can turn and i'll just tell you transparency of you know how much i, I just put into the trade was 40 bucks so i put 40 bucks and i was able to uh you know take that uh, double double that 40 bucks pretty easily and uh, put it back into some other assets to keep trading this up in these opportunities. So guys, I want you to let me know what you've been trading. Did you catch the BTC pump before it went past um, our levels here? Did you catch it at the bottom of 28,000? Uh, 28,000, uh, uh, 28, 28, eight right here. Did you catch it right there? Let me know guys, but look, you can see here, clear descending wedge bullish bull flag uptrend 
All right, guys, this is super exciting. It really is super exciting. We have a lot of things happening. Uh, we have some news that is going to probably shake that the crypto market, and it's gonna be all of these multiple approvings of the ETFs that are coming into play, guys. All right, I want you to be blessed. I want you to have a good, good week. It's Wednesday, we're in the middle of the week, and we can crush it. So I want you to leave a comment, I want you to leave a like, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I want you to join this community. Uh, it's it's an amazing community. And um, just so you guys know, I've been going on The Moon Show, which has been on Carl The Moon's channel. Been a regular guest on there. And uh, yeah, it's just been really awesome to have that opportunity to connect in that community. And everyone's been super awesome, super nice. And yeah, hope you guys are enjoying the content. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.